Welcome everyone to this second workshop on physics. Today we're going to be talking about the Boyle's law, one very important law that applies to lots of uh, diving circumstances. We're going to talk about that and how important it is for diving. Remember these uh, workshops that we're putting out are part of uh, an effort that Rotan Dive Academy is doing to make you feel more prepared for your IDC or help you uh, get prepared for your dive master course or if you have already done your dive master course or you have already done your IDC to refresh the concepts, the knowledge uh, behind the physics of diving. So today as we are talking about the Boyle's law, okay, we're going to uh, work on how volume change according to the change of pressure. Before we get into the uh, topic, into the materia, let me just open the Encyclopedia, the Encyclopedia of Recreational Diving in page 426, and here we have the Boyle's Law. And you can see everything that I'm going to be talking about, including all the calculations and the formulas, in these two pages, 426 and 427. So let's get into the, the topic, into the material. So Boyle's law. What did Boyle say? So I'm going to write down here the law of Boyle. It says, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to the absolute pressure, and density is directly proportional to absolute pressure. So what does that mean? We know from our open water diver course, one of the first questions of the Open Water Diver course uh, manual is actually a table that has depth, pressure, volume, and density. Okay? So, uh, we know that at zero meters, meaning at sea level, we have one atmosphere of pressure. We're going to write down ATM, but you can use either bar or ATM. It's exactly the same for all the calculation purposes. So at sea level, we have one bar or one atmosphere, which is the weight of all the air we have on top of us when we are at the level of the surface of the ocean. And then when we get to 10 meters, below the surface, we are going to have the weight of the air we have already on the surface plus the weight of 10 meters of water that we're going to have on top of us. And these 10 meters of water, of seawater, weight the same as the one atmosphere that we have on top of, the several kilometers we have on top when we are at the surface of the ocean. So now we're going to have one of air and the same weight for a second one of the weight of the water. So we'll, we will have two ATM. And every 10 meters, as we descend, we're going to have an extra atmosphere, which is the extra 10 meters that we descend below the surface. Right? So at 10 meters, we have two atmospheres. At 20 meters, we have three atmospheres. At 30 meters, we have four atmospheres, and so on. This is seawater, right? In fresh water, the, the, the pressure is going to be different. Why? Because the weight of the fresh water is less than the salted water. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. Let's just talk first about the volume and how the Boyle's law applies to the changes in volume. So let's say we have a given volume, any volume, right? It can be 100, it can be 10, it can be 1,000. At the surface, we're going to uh, just uh, for, for explaining, we're going to just write down 1. So the volume is going to be 1 at the surface, right? So when I descend to 10 meters, according to Boyle's law, the volume is going to decrease because it's going to be inversely proportional. So instead of having 1, I'm going to have 1 divided in 2 atmospheres. So I'm going to have half of the volume I have at the surface at 10 meters because now I have double the pressure. When I get to 20 meters, I'm going to have three atmospheres. So now the volume is going to be one, which was the volume at the surface, divided into the ambient pressure, which is going to be three in seawater. So I have one third 
of the volume I had on the sur at the surface, and we can continue just adding the numbers of the ambient pressure below the volume, so we know the volume is going to decrease as we go deeper. If we bring an object back to the surface, it will expand back to the orig original size, to the original volume the object had at the surface. And density, on the other hand, uh, increases in a proportional manner. So, at the surface, let's say the density is going to be 1, right? The same as with volume, just to have a number. And every time we go deeper, 10 meters deeper, the density is going to increase in a proportional manner. So, I, I, I try to think it this way. So, now I have Instead of this volume, I have half of the volume, but still that half of the volume is going to contain uh, the same amount of gas, the same particles uh, of the gas. So the gas is now going to be compressed, so it's going to use half of the space, so the density is going to be doubled. And if we continue descending, the density will continue to increase because the volume is now going to continue decreasing, so the same particles of the gas are now going to use less space that they have available because the volume is compressing. And we could continue on just adding the numbers as we go down. Okay, so we said this is uh, the boilers principle applied to salted water. What, what happens when we are in fresh water? So this is, I'm going to write down here, salted water, right? What happens when we are in fresh water? And I'm going to make a column here. So we can see what happens. So at sea level, we're going to have in fresh water the same atmosphere because this is just the weight of the air before going below the surface. So this atmosphere is not affected by the weight of the water because we haven't even entered the water, right? When we descend to 10 meters, we would have one more atmosphere, right? If it was sea water. But it's not sea water, it's fresh water. So for converting these manometric pressure, we have to divide the atmosphere that would have been in seawater, which is 1, into the weight of the water, which is 1.03. And then what we are going to have is 0.97 instead of 1, right? So these 10 meters of water are going to be 0.97 atms, plus 1 I had at the surface, when I get to 10 meters I'm going to have 1.97. And we can do the same for the following 10 meters, right? So we're going to have 97 and then 0.97 again. So it's going to be 0.97 times 2. That's 1.94 and this is just the weight of the water. So we need to add one atmosphere of the surface and we're going to have 2.94 atm when we get to 20 meters instead of 3 that we have in fresh water, in salted water. So you can see in fresh water that the pressure is going to be slightly less than what it is in salted water. So let's see now what happens in 4 ATM. So we're going to have 0.97 times 1, 2, and 3, right? So 0.97 times 3, that's 2.91 plus 1, right? That would be 3.91 ATM instead of 4 atmospheres that we have in salted water. Remember, what we're doing here is we are just converting the manometric pressure, which is only the weight of the water as we are diving, without considering the weight of the air, because the air is not going to change. What is going to change is only the weight of these 10 meters of water, because now fresh water weighs less than what salted water weighs. Right? So 0.97 per every 10 meters of fresh water as we descend. Okay, so this is very important for several reasons. When we are diving, we know that gases are going to be affected and the volume of the gases and gases only, liquids do not compress. But gases are going to get compressed according to Boyle's law. And what are the air spaces we have in our body? We have the lungs, we have the sinuses, we have the ears, we have the throat, we have some gas on the intestines and the, uh, the digestive system, and we also have the mass, right, which is going to be air spaces. All of those air spaces are going to be affected by Boyle's law. And this is where we know from open water diver course 
that the more important rule in scuba diving is never hold your breath. Because if you hold your breath, when you ascend, the volume is going to expand and the lungs can overexpand and that would be a very serious injury which is called lung overexpansion injury. Right? With density, what happens is that when we breathe on the water, as we're breathing double the density or triple the density or larger density, we need to use the gas faster from the tank because the lung capacity is not going to change. What is going to change is the amount of gas that now I need to inhale to fill the lungs to their total capacity. And we're going to talk about that in a bit. But before we continue on, I want to show you something which is very interesting, which is how, how much change occurs in this variation of depth. And I have put in this table, you can see here, I have the depth, but now it's in every five meters. It's not every 10 as we had before. So we have zero meters, five meters, 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters, 25 and 30. And here I have the pressure in seawater, right? So this is salted water and we have at the surface one bar at five meters, we have 1.5, one of the air and 0.5 for the five meters and then two at 10, 2.5 at 15, three at 20, 3.5 and four at 30, right? So we know how to, cal how to calculate that pressure and now, on the volume, what I've put here is, let's imagine we have a container, just to make the numbers very easy to understand, I just put a thousand uh, liters at the surface. So, in zero meters at the surface, we have a thousand liters, right? When we descend, we know if we go to 30 meters, we're going to have four bar, so the volume is going to be a thousand divided in four, so it's going to be 250. And we can do the same for all the rest of the pressure. So if we go to 20 meters, the pressure is going to be 3 bar, so 1,000 divided in 3 is going to be 333. If we go to 10 meters, the pressure is going to be 2 bar, so 1,000 divided in 2 is going to be 500. We know how to make those calculations already, but what is important and what I want to show you here is that when you ascend from 30 meters to 25 meters, it's 5 meters of difference on the depth, and the volume will change from 250 to 285.7. So the difference between these five meters of, of depth in the volume is going to be 35.7 liters. But when we ascend from 25 to 20, the difference is going to be from 285.7 to 333. So that the difference is 47.6 liters, which is larger than in the same five meters of difference we had in the previous depth. If we continue on, and now we ascend from 20 to 15 meters, the volume will change from 333 to 400, so that's 66.7, the change on the volume from these depths to these depths, and it continues to be every five meters. And then if we continue up, right, from 15 to 10, you're going to have from 400 to 500, so the difference is 100, instead of 35, 47, or 66. We continue on, so we go from 10 to 5, and now we have a difference of 500 to 666, so the difference, the change on the volume is going to be 166 liters. But look what happens when we get from 5 meters to 0 meters. The volume is going to change from 666 to 1,000, so the difference between these uh, two volumes is going to be 333. Okay, so the change in the volume is going to be 333. So as you can see on these numbers, every five meters the volume will change, but the more uh, large the change, the change is going, the, the volume is going to change largely as you get closer to the surface. And actually, in the last five meters is when we have the majority of the change in the volume. And this is why it is so important, according to Boyle's law, to make the safety stop at five meters. So we allow all that salt nitrogen that we could have in our tissues to go out before we ascend, because we know that in that last portion of the ascent, the balls could expand largely, and we have a larger risk of having a decompression sickness. So this is another way in which you can apply the Boyle's law to uh, diving safety. Okay, so let's put that into uh, some exercises. 
So we can calculate numbers and how the volume is going to change. But before we get into that, there is a couple of uh, concepts that you need to be aware of. And we have talked about a couple of them already. So we have been talking about ambient pressure, which is also known as absolute pressure. What's the ambient pressure of, or the absolute pressure? Is the pressure that is going to be exerted in our gas volumes, in our gas spaces, by one atmosphere of air and the weights of the water that we have on top of us. So those two added up are going to give us the ambient or the absolute pressure. But we also have what we call the gauge or the manometric pressure. In some cases they also call it the instrumental pressure. And this is only, only the weight of the water we have on top. So these do not include the one atmosphere of the weight of the air that we have on top of the surface of the ocean. This is very important for you to understand because there is going to be, especially when we get to fresh water, there is going to be some questions in which we need to know what's the manometric pressure before we can even do any calculations. Okay, so now that we have explained that, what Boyle said is that as the volume is going to change in an inverse, uh, inversely proportional manner as the pressure increases, he came out with a formula which is P1, which is pressure 1, multiplied by volume 1, is going to be equal to pressure 2 times volume 2. Right? Because the relationship between pressure and volume is going to still be the same, right? If we go from one depth to another, from one pressure to another. So using this formula, we can calculate all the changes that might occur in uh, a flexible container. Right? So we're going to do the first exercise. I'm just going to leave the formula there so you can have it present and you can see what I'm going to do on the calculations. So let's do an easy one. We have, at the surface, we have a flexible container, an object, that has a volume of 25 liters. And we're going to take this flexible container down below the surface to a depth of 30 meters. What would be the new volume of the flexible container when we get to this depth? Remember, this is seawater. We are working right now in sanded water to make uh, the, the calculations easier. So the first thing we need to do is we have to find out what are the two ambient pressures. So the ambient pressure, and I'm talking about the ambient pressure, not the manometric pressure. The ambient pressure at sea level, we know, is 1 atm. What would be the ambient pressure at 30 meters? We know 1 of air and 3 of every 10 meters, so the ambient pressure is going to be 4 atmospheres at 30 meters. That's the ambient pressure. So now that I have the information, right, I have the first volume, I have the first pressure, and I have the second pressure, I can just put all the information on the formula. So P1, pressure 1, is going to be 1 atm, and I'm going to multiply that for volume 1, which is 25 liters. And that is going to be equal to pressure 2, which we know is 4, multiplied by volume 2, which is the variable I'm trying to find out. So 1 times 25 is going to be 25, and this 4 that I have on the other side of the formula is going to come down to divide. So 25 divided in 4 is going to be my volume 2. So using a calculator, we can say 25 divided in 4 is 6.25 liters. Right? So the new volume of the flexible container is going to be 6.25 liters when we get to 30 meters of seawater. 
Okay, let's do another one. I'm going to leave the formula there so we can work with it. And we're going to do one that it is not going to start from the surface. So we're going to have an object that is, let's say, at 10 meters. Okay, so we have an object, a flexible container at 10 meters, and at that depth, the object has a volume of 24 liters. I'm going to bring this flexible container down to a depth of 20 meters. What would be the new volume of the flexible container when I get to that depth? So the first thing we need to do is to uh, figure out what's the ambient pressure in each of these two depths. So in 10 meters of seawater, we know we have one of air and one for the 10 meters, so the ambient pressure is going to be two atmospheres. And at 20 meters, we're going to have one of air and two of water, so the total ambient pressure is going to be three ATM, three atmospheres. Right, so now that we have the information, we're just going to fill in the formula. So pressure one is two ATM, times volume 1, which is 24 liters, right? That's equal to pressure 2, which is 3 atm, times volume 2, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so 2 times 24 is 48, and that is going to get divided by the 3, which is on the other side of the formula, and that will give me volume 2. So again, 48 divided in 3, comes out to uh, 16 liter volume, which is going to be volume two. And that's the answer of this question. This object that had 24 liters at 10 meters, now is going to have 16 liters at 20 meters, okay? Let's do the last one of these volume changes, uh, but coming up instead of going down. We know that if we take the object down, the pressure will increase and according to Euler's law, the volume is going to decrease. And what would happen if we have an object that is uh, at 18 meters, and at that depth, the object has a volume of 12, 12 meters. If I bring this object to a new depth of 5 meters, what would be the new volume? I like to make the graphic because it gives me the idea that the number is going to be larger or it's going to be smaller, right? Just graphically, I know I have a way to make sure that the number, the calculation that I'm doing is correct. It could not be a smaller number because I'm going up. So I'm going to write a larger object, I'm going to draw a larger object to help me uh, make sure that the calculation is correct. So we're going to get the ambient pressure. Remember, we're working in seawater. So in five meters, we're going to have 1.5, which is one of air, and half of the five meters, right? 1.5 atm. And at 18 meters, we're going to have one of air, one for the first 10 meters, so that's two, and then 0.8 for the following eight meters. Right, so now we have the information. We're going to fill the formula. Pressure one is 1.5 atm. Going to multiply that. Oh, sorry, we're starting the other way around. Now we're going up, right? So pressure one is going to be the pressure that I have under. So pressure one is going to be 2.8 because the object is starting from here and going here. So this is position one, this is position two. So 2.8 atm multiplied by volume one, which is 12 liters, it's going to be equal to Pressure 2, which is 1.5, multiplied by volume 2, which is what I'm trying to find. So 2.8 times 12, 2.8 times 12, that's equal to 33.6, and I'm going to divide this number by the 1.5 that I have on the other side of the formula, divided 1.5, that will give me a new volume of 20. 22.4 liters. So, according to my graphic, the number should be larger. So I have 12, now I have 22. So the object has expanded because of the difference of the uh, pressure. Okay? 
So this is one of the applications that the Boyle's law may have in diving circumstances. But there is another one. Let's say now that we have an object, a container, which is, let's say, a lifting device that we're going to use, right? It's a large lifting device that has a capacity of 15 liters, right? And I'm going to use this to leave an anchor or an engine or something that is down there at the bottom of the ocean, and I need to fill this container with air. So I want to figure out how much air do I have to pump from the surface to fill this container that has a capacity of 15 liters and is laying down at 20 meters of seawater, of the ocean. Okay, so what we're going to do is the same, right? We're going to figure out what's the ambient pressure in seawater. So we know at the surface we have one ATM. And at 20 meters what we have is three ATM, right? One of air and two for each of the 10 meters, 10 and 20, so two. Now that I have this information, <coughs> I need to put that information into the formula, right? So now, volume one is what I'm looking for, because this is what I do not know. I know pressure one is going to be one times volume one is going to be equal to, uh, volume uh, pressure two is going to be three times volume two, which is 15 liters. So basically, one goes dividing on the other side, so it would be volume one is three times 15, that's 45, divided in one, which is going to be 45. So the volume that of gas that I need to pump from the surface to fill this container laying down at 20 meters off the ocean is going to be 45 liters. And it makes sense, it's 15 liters, the total capacity, but now the gas is going to be compressed three times. So I need to pump triple the amount of gas to fill this container. Makes sense, right? That is another way in which you can use Boyle's law to calculate the gas that you need to pump down. There is another one that relates to density. And we were saying, we were talking at the beginning of this workshop, that you can use Boyle's law to understand how long can you dive with the content of air within one cylinder. Okay, according to the density of the gas and obviously the, uh, the consumption rate that you may have, which for each person is going to be completely different. But let's do one exercise in this case. Okay, so we have, this is scuba cylinder, right? And we have a diver that is breathing in total 28 bar in 15 minutes diving at 25 meters of seawater, right? I want to know what would be the surface air consumption, which we call SAC, surface air consumption rate. So how much gas is this diver consuming if he was at the surface. So for this, what we're going to do is, he's using 28 bar in 15 minutes, so I need to know first how much gas, how many bars is he using every minute. So I'm going to divide 28 into 15 to get bars per minute, right? So 28 bars divided into 15 minutes will give me a result of bars per minute, right? So I'm going to do the calculation, so 28 divided into 15, and we have 1.86 bars every minute. This is what the diver is consuming, but he's still at this depth. What's the ambient pressure in 25 meters? In seawater, we know this is 3.5 atm, right? So what I need to do now is convert this sac rate, this uh, consumption rate, to the surface consumption rate. And for that, I know that as I go deeper, I use more gas. When I go shallower or closer to the surface, I'm going to use less gas, right? So for calculating that, I'm going to use this 
1.86 bars per minute, and I'm going to divide it into ATM, the ambient pressure, which is 3.5. So 1.86 divided 3.5 will give me a surface air consumption rate of 0 0.53. So this diver uses 0.53 bars per minute at the surface. That would be the answer to this question. And you would say, why do I need that information? This is something that tech divers use a lot because <clears throat> we need to calculate how much gas I need to carry with me, right? So I'm not going to do a dive if I do not have enough gas to make the entire plant and come back to the surface doing all the decompression stops. So we need to calculate the amount of gas that I use at the surface, so then we can calculate the amount of each of the gases that I need to use during the entire decompression dive, the entire technical dive. So let's do one more, and now we're going to apply this to a very common situation, which might be, for example, the case you want to know what's your consumption rate. That, uh, you, you don't know probably at this point, or if you don't, if you know, maybe you want to go check out if the consumption rate has not changed during these quarantine times. So we're going to say that a diver at the surface, sitting down, breathing from the regulator at a constant, normal, steady uh, rate, rhythm, is breathing 200 bar in 130 minutes. 200 bar is basically one full tank, right? A completely full tank would be 207. So let's just round up to 200. So one complete tank in two hours and 10 minutes. Okay, so I want to know, and this is the practical application, I want to know if I go diving to 30 meters, how long will the tank last? Okay, so if, assuming you could use the entire tank in 30 meters, we know we are not going to do that because we plan gas to return to the surface and do a safety stop. But in the hypothetical case that you, uh, in the hypothetical case that you can use the entire cylinder, how long could you breathe from this tank at 30 meters? So let's first calculate what's the ambient pressure at 30 meters we know is for ATM, right? So, if this diver is breathing 200 bar in 130 minutes, we need to know how many bars per minute the diver is using. So I'm going to divide 200 bar into 130 minutes, so I can get the bars per minute. So 200 divided in 130 will give me a consumption rate of 1.53 bar Per minute. Okay? This is basically the surface air consumption because we are calculating a diver at the surface, right? So if this diver is using 1.53 bars per minute, how long could the diver breathe at 30 meters? So first I need to convert this consumption rate at the surface for the consumption rate at depth. So I'm going to multiply. 1.53 bars per minute, which are at the surface, times the ambient pressure, which is 4 ATM. And now I'm going to get the consumption rates at depth. Okay, so this is going to be bars per minute. So this diver is using, at 30 meters, 6.15 bars every minute. Right? But we have 200 bar on the cylinder. What I want to know is how long the tank will last. So I need to divide a full tank, which is 200 bar, into 6.15 bars per minute to see how, uh, how long, how many minutes that I ever can breathe from that tank. So 200 bars of the full tank divided into 6.15 will give me a time of 32.5 minutes. So basically applying the Boyle's law to this calculation, a diver that could breathe 2 hours and 10 minutes 
at the surface the entire tank could also breathe the entire tank at 30 meters in 32 minutes. Right? This is very important because if, we, if I was this diver, I know that with one tank I should not be diving more than 30 minutes. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to save gas again to ascend and do a safety stop, but I have a maximum limit given my consumption rate at depth. Okay? So uh, this is how you apply the Boyle's law to, uh, to actual diving circumstances. What uh, we're going to do right now is we're going to work in the same exercises or similar exercises but in fresh water in which the ambient pressure is going to be different because the, the fresh water weighs less than salted water. So we're going to do that but before we get into the calculations Boyle uh, made this formula, right? Because he explained the relation between volume and pressure. So he said the volume uh, is going to in, is the, the volume change is going to change in an inversely proportional manner as the pressure increases, and the density is going to increase in a proportional manner. But then came Charles, and this is another law, and said, okay, temperature has also uh, an influence on the volumes, and he said if you have the same volume and you put it in a cold, uh, very cold room, the pressure inside the object, if it's a rigid container, is going to decrease. Or, if it's a flexible container, the volume will decrease because of the decrease of the, the temperature. And if the, temper, the temperature increases, the volume will increase in a flexible container or the pressure in a rigid container will increase, which is what basically happens when we fill up the tanks, right? Some of you may have uh, noticed that when you fill the tank, the tank is hot, right? And the pressure might be in 3,000, but then when you come back the following day, the pressure is to 2,800 uh, 2 psi, which is less than what you had the day before when you were pumping, right? Because as it is hot, the pressure is going to increase. When it cools down, the pressure is going to decrease. So basically, Charles, the the adding of temperature to the formula, right? I'm not going to enter into calculations, but it is important for you to know that Boyle came with the first part of the formula, and then Charles added the temperature on the formula, and uh, with those two laws, you can calculate basically anything that happens with gases and pressure and temperature in a diving circumstances. So as I was saying before, now we're going to do some exercises just to um, explain what happens with fresh water, right? So let's say we have, at the surface, we have a flexible container right, that has a volume of 30 liters, and I'm going to take this flexible container down to a new depth of 22 meters of a lake, a freshwater lake, what would be the new volume of this object? So basically what we need to do is the same that we were doing before, calculate the ambient pressure. First, the easiest one is that we know the ambient pressure at the surface is going to be 1 atm. This is not affected by the weight of fresh water because we are not below the surface. But when we get to 22 meters, we are going to have a different weight. It is not going to be 2.2, right? Because 2.2 would be the manometric pressure in seawater, but not in fresh water. What we need to do is we need to convert that pressure, right, to uh, fresh water pressure. We can do different ways. One is we can calculate 0.97, which is 1 divided into 1.03. For, for every 10 meters of depth in fresh water. So we could say 0.97 is uh, the pressure increase every 10 meters of depth. So we can multiply the, uh, the amount of, of uh, meters that we have, in this case would be 22 meters, will it come out to uh, an equivalent pressure in salted water of 2.2 atmosphere. So I'm going to multiply 2.2 times 0.97, and I'm going to have a manometric pressure of 2.13 atm. This is just the weight of the water, right, in fresh water. In salted water, it would have been it would have been 2.2. 2.2 2 
But now, I have the weight of the water, which is 2.13 atmospheres. I'm going to add the one atmosphere of air that I have on the surface for an ambient pressure of 3.13 atmospheres. Now I have the information that I can put on the formula, right? So I have pressure one, volume one, pressure two, and I'm going to try and find volume two. So pressure one is one, volume one is 30, that equals to pressure one, pressure two, which is 3.13, times volume two, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so one times 30 is going to be 30, and I'm going to divide it by 3.13, which are on the other side of the formula, and that will give me volume two. So 30 divided 3.13, we come out to 9.58 liters, right? So that would be the new volume of this object in fresh water. So you see, the, the, the proceedings are basically the same except for the calculation of the ambient pressure. Because we need, for learning what's the ambient pressure, we need to know what's the gauge pressure, right? Convert it to fresh water, and then we need to add the atmosphere of air to have an ambient pressure that is going to be slightly less than what it would have been in salted water. So in salted water, it would have been, it would have been 3.2. But now it is 3.13, right? So let's do one more in fresh water so you can get an idea of how these calculations are done. Okay, so let's say now we have an object that is at 25 meters of a freshwater lake and at this depth the object has a volume of 11 liters. If I bring this object to a new depth of 10 meters in the lake, what would be the new volume? And I know the volume has to be larger because we're going up, right? So I'm going to write a larger circle, a larger object, to make sure that the number is going to be larger than what we have. So let's do now, we have volume one, we need to calculate what's the ambient pressure one. In salted water, it would have been 2.5, the manometric pressure, but we need to convert these to the weight of fresh water, so for that, I'm going to divide into 1.03 kilograms per liter, right? So 2.5 divided into 1.03 is going to give me a manometric pressure of 2.42. So. This is the manometric pressure, and I need to add one atmosphere of air, so I can have the ambient pressure, so I know it's going to be 3.42 atms, right, atmospheres. This is pressure one. Volume one, now I need to know what's pressure two. So I have one atmosphere of air, and then in 10 meters, we're going to have in salted water, it would have been 1, but now it's going to be 1, divided into 1.03. So that comes out to 0.97 plus 1 atmosphere of air. I'm going to have 1.97 instead of 2. That would have been the ambient pressure in salted water. So now that I have pressure 2, I can just put all the numbers in the formula, right? So I have pressure 1. 3.42 times volume 1, which is 11 liters, that's going to be equal to pressure 2, 1.97 times volume 2, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to do this multiplication here, so we have 3.42 times 11, that is going to give me 37.62, and this is going to get divided by 1.97, which was at the other side of the formula, and that will give me volume 2. So 37.62 divided into 1.97 will give me a new volume, which is volume 2, of 19.09 liters. And that's going to be the new volume of the flexible container if we go up in fresh water. So with this calculation we have gotten to the end of this workshop. I hope 
you have enjoyed uh, the workshop and remember the objective of these workshops is to keep the uh, theory and the application fresh for those of you that have already done the dive master course and uh, are thinking on doing the IDC this is also going to be very useful for those of you willing to take the dive master course Obviously, you need to understand and apply these to actual diving circumstances. And as an instructor, if you're planning to take your IEC, you need to be able to explain these to your dive master candidates. So um, we have gotten to the end. Uh, please remember that these videos are going to be uploaded in our YouTube channel that you can see down here, right? And if you have any questions on the courses that we teach, you can go into our webpage that you can see here rawdandiveacademy.com and if you have any inquiries or questions regarding the exercises we have done or the courses that we can teach you can send us an email to gopro at rawdandiveacademy.com and I can personally answer any inquiries, questions you may have regarding the courses or the explanations so um, this is the end of the workshop, remember we have several workshops coming uh, up next week we're going to be talking about Henry's Law so don't miss out pay attention to our Facebook channel in which we're going to be uh, transmitting live the following workshops so uh, thanks for watching and see you next time